So hello, Jen and Ron. Obviously, you know that we're having a little chat today um, yeah. around the Legs Matters Week, and it's going to be all about really your journey because you've both been on a bit of a journey with um, yes. Ron's, Ron's leg ulcer. Yes. Um, well, obviously, I know you quite well because I get to see you every week. Um, but it would be nice if you could just tell us a little bit about Ron, your journey and when all of your problems began, began. And then we'll talk a little bit about with you, Jan, about your journey because you went from wife to being Ron's carer and looking after his leg. Yes, indeed. So, Ron, let, uh, let, give, us, give us the lay down on your, on your journey with your leg. How did it all start? Yeah. Well, it all started with a pain in the Achilles tendon. And I went to see a specialist and they took an MRI scan and said, uh, yes, we're going to have to operate. But when he went in to operate, he found it was far worse. It wasn't a break or a strain. It was disintegrating. So they had to cut up the uh, calf about six to eight inches and turn a piece of muscle and sew it into what was left of the Achilles to get some blood flowing. So I had an incision six to eight inches long, which after the operation split at the bottom and the top. My practice nurse, which I had at the time, worked on it and she managed to heal the top part of the wound uh, after what two years or so mm. but the bottom half stayed uh, stubbornly open um, she wasn't able to do uh, pressure dressing or anything like that so uh, then unfortunately our surgery closed uh, and moved to a, a, a different area. So we had to go on to a different surgery. And uh, it had, by that time, the wound had got so big, they said they couldn't deal with it. So I had to go to the local clinic. And I was there for two years or so. Um, kept getting <coughs> a considerable number of... Uh, infections and each time it started to improve I got another infection and it just got worse. Then I went to a private hospital, had it debrided and I was told it would now heal and all that happened was I got an MRSA in the wound. So, so I then moved on to uh, a private clinic and they said I had pyoderma gangrenosum. And after about six months, they said, um, we've got the wrong diagnosis. And the specialist there had words with Dr. Bull at, uh, at this clinic here. Um, it took a long time to get here, but once they did, um, they they put me on the pressure dressing and it started to improve straight away. But at that time, it was it was a very large wound uh, or also. Um, and then I got on a trial, a special trial um, with uh, a new type of dressing. That helped. I was on that for about three weeks. Um, and then they put me on the wound express machine, which has absolutely worked wonders. And that's where I am at the moment. But in between times, like during the lockdown period, um, Jan was uh, dressing my leg. And it was with great difficulty as well, trying to do it on a bed at the wrong height. Yeah, so is it right? I think um was it during lockdown, Jan, you learned did you you learned to do the compression, didn't you, for Ron? Yes, I, I did for a short while and then I think it was Gabriella that decided that he should come in once a week and that's how we came to be here every week. Um and his treatment has gone from 
well, wonders, absolute wonders. And mm -hmm. the Express is just amazing. Yeah. I, you know, it, it can't did, believe did it. You, did you have any compression beforehand? So when you was at the practice nurses, did they do compression or was it more of a like, dressing that was applied? No, just the dressing. The, the practice nurse didn't do compression. No, she hadn't been trained. Um, but when we went to the local clinic, they were trained. And that was where I I did quite a lot there, but I they didn't teach me to do compression. Um, with the practice nurse, I used to, in between times, because she was seeing him three times a week, and I used to take over when, when the practice moved. We yeah. stayed with them for a short while, and I would do a couple of dressings a week, but it wasn't merely the, the dressings, not with compression. But when I came here, um, they they tried. I I did it a few times at home, didn't I? Mm. But uh, they they did give me some training. But of course, I never ever managed to handle the actual um, compression bit where you you sort of have to get it to a certain um, tightness. Um, but I did dress his leg for a long time with just the straightforward dressings, even when we went on holiday, I used to have to take it all with us. And mm -hmm. we actually did have a, a holiday abroad when I did it the whole of the, the holiday. Oh, so so you, by you dressing it kind of allowed you to go on holiday, I suppose. It, it, it did, yes, because as I say, it wasn't compression. Um, and strangely enough, there was a nurse on our tour. And she said to me one morning, did you do that? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, it's not bad. You haven't done bad. <laughs> I felt <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> we could make a nurse. But, but how did, so how did you find that? How did you find going from really being a wife to then being a sort of nurse and a carer? Was it, did you find it quite empowering or was you quite happy when, when Ron got to a clinic that did the full compression? Well, I think... To be honest with you, it was like a passion to get him better yeah. because it's gone on so long and it has, obviously, it, it's it's not been a, a joy to do except that I was being pushing myself. I've got to be able to help him get better because it does impact on both of you. Yeah. And, it, you know, and it can affect what you do. And if we had pushed on like me looking after him then we would have missed out on things um I have to say Ron has been he's been stoic as well yeah. but we've sort did... of oh, done sorry. it together and how did you find it Ron Jan doing your dressings did you like it did you did you not like it did it feel you know how did it I, feel for you I felt I would felt very worried about it because I could see that uh, it was so difficult for her. It was not only doing, trying to do the pressure dressing, but trying to do it without the right facilities. It was, yeah. it was terribly difficult trying to do it on a, with me laid out on the bed and uh, no, no uh, equipment. It was very difficult. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, did someone help when you was doing the dressings yourself? Did you have someone supplying the dressings or did you have to get those yourself? No, we got those from the GP. The GP. Um, when, when Ron was at the private clinic, obviously we had to pay for those and obviously his treatment. But we were so desperate, you know, to, to get somewhere because we just seemed to be getting nowhere at all. And uh, and at first we thought, well, this, this is it, we're going to do it. But then she said, the, the specialist actually, when he went there, she said it's either vascular or it's pyoderma gangrenosum. And he had all these doctors done um, at the private hospital where the operation was actually first done. But we were then seeing a different different surgeon when he did this debridement, which, I mean, as Ron said, he got MRSA, 
and, and I was extremely angry. I can't tell you how angry I was. Um, and they, they they said they knew how to treat it now and all this sort of thing, but I wasn't convinced because, you know, the, when anybody says MRSA, you, you, your brain goes into absolute panic and you think, yeah, well, people lost limbs and all that sort of thing through it, didn't they? Um, but, uh, I mean, they were very good at the private clinic, but as Ron said, they, well, they were out of their depth, basically. It was a dermatology clinic, but it was the specialist there that led us to here because she happened to know Dr. Bull. And that was how our journey started here. Um, and I have to say that the treatment has been second to none. And I mean, you've seen the pictures, Hayley, what he was like when he came here and what he's like today. I mean, it has gone from what was a hideous sort of mess to the tiny thing that it is today. Um, but what, it's what do you think has made that difference? What, what has made, if you've had compression previously and then not compression and you've been through lots of, it sounds like you've been through quite a few services, what do you yeah. think has made the difference? Well, I, I think because you're such specialists here, I mean, when we were going to the local clinic, um, I mean, you are just a number. I, I don't mean that in an unkind way, but that's just how busy they are. I mean, they told us ulcers are the biggest expense the NHS has. Mm. I mean, I, I find that hard to believe, but that's what they claimed. But they did different compression. I think you Ron, had four layers. That's yes, right, I did. And it, I mean, that was just unbelievable. Sometimes he would come out and he couldn't get his shoe on and he had to go come home in plastic bags, Tesco's carrier bags. Oh, because it's quite bulky. So you find oh. the short stretch uh, better, the, the, the Actico one you find better. Oh, yes, yes, much better. I mean, yes, he, he only wears these, um, these canvas shoes because one foot is still larger than the mm -hmm. other. <laughs> By what, two pairs. What's nice though is you're nearly healed now, Ron. So soon you'll be in oh. some nice hosiery. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> it, I mean, if, if you could do your journey again um, and you cut out all of these different services you kind of had to go through before you got somewhere or, or to a, a, you know, the right good treatment. What would you tell someone if, if your neighbour says, oh, I've got a leg ulcer, what, what do you feel has made the difference to you, whether that be, you know, time, type of bandaging, you know, what, what would you tell someone if they had a leg ulcer? I'd say get yourself somewhere where they knew about pressure dressings and how to do them properly. And there's no doubt about it. That, that started to clear it up straight away. This machine has been wonderful, but when we first came here, the pressure dressing and the expertise with which it's applied made all the difference in the world straight away. Did, did it just, what did it help with? Did you have pain? Um, was it very, just very wet, the size? What, oh, what it, was, it was wet and messy. Yes. And, and, so, uh, and uh, very sloppy, and when um, it had to be cleaned with what I used to loosely term as a Brillo pad, it was agony. Now, of course, you can poke it around and deep ride it with your little uh, probe, and I can't really feel anything at all. So the pain's decreased a lot. The pain, the, pain has, the pain has gone. Good. That is really good. And do you do you feel that it was a relief that you found or got into a service that was able to provide the right treatment for your leg? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I if we hadn't been able to get here, I think we'd have still been back at square one. Yeah. Do you think along your journey, have you had lots of different advice around what you should do, what you shouldn't do? Yes, that's right. And 
they, I mean, I used to, when we were at the local clinic, they had trainees being taught how to do pressure dressings. And of course, they, some of them would be their first week and uh, they didn't really know how to do it. But I was, if they happen to be the one on duty, that's the one you got. So you might get a decent dressing, you might not. Depend on who's on that. that does, would you say it makes a difference with how um, compression is applied? Is there, Do you find a difference in how it's applied makes a difference to your leg? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, when, when I used to go and see the um, so-called expert, perhaps once in three or four months, she gave me a, a, a whole sheet of instructions to bring back to the clinic. Uh, like, you must always have it dressed by the same person. Um, this is the way you should have it done. Uh, and you go back and they'd say, well, that's what the wish list says, but yes, you don't get that here. It, it was... I, so I, it I depends mean, on the expertise, I suppose, is what you're... Yeah, well, it absolutely depends on the people doing it, yes. Yeah. And here, the uh, they're all experts as far as... <laughs> well, 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 well. I, I suppose one thing we haven't spoken about on your journey is around exercise as well. So do you do your uh, ankle exercises? Was you ever given any exercises to do? Never had any exercises to do until I came here. And then, and then what was you what was she given then, to do? Then I, then I was told to uh, do a half, at least half hour walk every day, and then put my foot up for about twenty minutes, and uh, then do various uh, ankle and leg exercises. And did you find that? Do you think they've benefited your healing? Oh, they do help. Yes, they do help. I can't do all the exercises that are required because I have a problem with my back and it yeah. uh, it uh, aggravates it. But uh, I do what I can and it certainly helps. And the walking is good. Oh, well, the walking is very good, yes. Yeah. Was that really limited before when your ulcer was really bad? Your walking? It was, yeah, it, it was painful then, yes. Well, at one time we both belonged to a Tai Chi group and in the end Ron had to drop out because it was hurting too much to do certain movements um, mm -hmm. but he could probably do go back now not not sort of to do it with quite as much energy as we used to be able to do it but I think you know he is probably for his age he's, he's probably pretty fit now oh lovely yeah. We'll see you back in Tai Chi soon, will we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I it would be good. I went back to the Tai Chi class, and I used to find that after a, about half an hour, we do certain movements, and then I find it would start to bleed. So I used to pack up, um, and then I and then I had to stop altogether. Do you think you'll go back? Once it's healed, because it's nearly there, isn't it now? It's nearly there, but there's there's no Tai Chi classes anymore. No, that's very true, isn't it? That is yeah. true. Because there used to be uh, groups of sort of 20 and 30 in a room and it couldn't be done. Yeah. Are there other things that you're looking forward to getting back back into once you're, once you're into your hosiery or...? Well, I should I should continue with walking as far as uh, as much as I can. I mean, we used to uh, we used to do what were known as life walks with the uh, they were run by the count, local council, um, um. and we used to used to do that three three days a week, be, be a couple of miles on average, uh, going at uh, a speed that. Uh, 
built up a sweat and you got your blood pumping. Oh. And they were very good. Yeah. They kept us fit. Kept you going. I think you're fitter than me. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to get you fully healed and back into hosiery so you can then um, get back to all your activities. Because you, I think you've seen, I mean, even when we've spoken, you know, in appointments, you've seen quite active or you were really, really active. Well, I know well, the, yeah. obviously the pandemic's played a part, yeah. but I know your leg has too in, in that. Yes. And and of course, we do like the garden, so we, we're pretty active and we've got a lot of stairs in our house as well. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to hoover to keep you going, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but I, I think you've just got to be very focused and determined. And I know it must hurt a, a lot, the person that's got the ulcer. I'm sure they can be absolute misery, but if you've got somebody that is determined with you, I'm sure it helps. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I think we're lucky because we have got one another and uh, it's, you sort of, you don't perhaps give up so easily, you fight on because, yeah. it, you well, know. All, all during the lockdown period, Jan was, uh, Dressing my leg two or three times a week, not not pressure dressing, but uh, dressing it. And although it wasn't improving, it wasn't getting any worse. And uh, we couldn't get anybody else to do it at the time, so I was very thankful. Did, the, did the local clinic close down near you during the lockdown? Is that where you'd got as far as? No, we'd left. We'd, we'd left. left the I, think, I think Ron's gone into lockdown when he really means before lockdown, when I was doing it two or three times a week. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's right. No, not since you've been, because we came to you last June. June. Yeah. Well, we were in the lockdown then, wasn't it? Yeah. We were just into lockdown um, because I remember Dr. Ball saying, um, and uh, we were, what's it called? I was special. Um, oh, underlying uh, problem. Yeah. And extremely vulnerable. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. Extremely vulnerable. And uh, so I was in, I can't remember what they called it now. But anyway, <laughs> um, he, <laughs> Dr. Ball said, no, he still wanted to see Ron. And, you know, we, We've been with you ever since. And I mean, I must say the journey in this amount of time has been much easier. You know, yeah. you felt that here you feel as though that's what everybody's aim is, to get you better, get you healed, and sort of make you whole again. Um, but it, it we was. didn't get that. We didn't get that um, with the local clinic. I think they have probably a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you'd have, for a few months, you'd have a certain nurse in charge and she would be great. And then you'd lose yeah. the nurse. So the key is consistency and time, isn't it? I think, I think that is the absolute key, is the consistency. And also, everybody is... The, the attitude here is very, very different to how it is in a local clinic. But, well, so if you could give advice on, on attitudes of, of, of us as nurses, what, what helps a patient? What helps, you know, you, Ron, as a patient, and what helps you, Jan, as Ron's wife and, and carer? What is the right, you know, what makes you feel better when you come and see nurses to do your leg? Well, strangely, it may seem it seems almost like a pleasure to come yeah. here. <laughs> everybody, everybody is so happy and and uh, concerned and, and anxious to get the wound healed, and it, it, it they treat you like an old friend, and it, it's just very uplifting. 
Per, some sort of personal, is this the personal touch as well? As it well is, as it is. Absolutely. I mean, from the minute you come through the front door, everybody is is full of cheerfulness and you just, it's a joy, as Ron says. Strangely enough, it's a weird way of putting it, I suppose, isn't it? It is a weird way of putting it. But yeah. it, it's, <laughs> you know, I want to impart to you how important you all are and how the, your kindness but at the same time you'll have a laugh and a joke and it, the attitude is just incredible it you know we've never experienced anything like it have we no not um, on this, really. this journey you know, <laughs> you so really the, are. the take home message then really is to have a happy smiley nurse <laughs> Compression. <laughs> Compression is the key, um, and I think really for you, for you as a patient, it's about having the, the time um, with your with your leg and the right treatment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, the time that is and getting in, possibly getting that right treatment sooner because you know I know at the beginning you said you'd gone through quite a few chances. Yes before you even got to somewhere that could apply compression? Well, this, this journey started in um, 2013, obviously, that, and it was the 13th of March and Ron had the operation. And it it's, looks, fingers crossed, that we're almost at the end of, of that journey. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yes. And do you and feel I, positive that it will heal now, you know, today? You feel positive that it will heal? I have personally never, ever given up hope. I've had many fears along the way, um, nasty things and never getting better, but I've always, always had that underlying determination. I've had people say to me, even a theatre nurse, a retired theatre nurse who, who we know, well, she said it's just not going to get better now, is it? And I said, it is. <laughs> I said, I've got to get better. And I think, I mean, it, you can call it, I mean, it's not a religious faith with me, actually. It is just a determination. But I think you have got to always have faith in the people that are looking after you and yourself, your determination. Yeah. And each so, other. I think it sounds like you supported each other quite a yeah. lot through... Yeah. Which is really important. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like I said, we're lucky we've still got one another. Um, but you know, and it must be a lot harder if you're alone. But you must, you must soldier on. You really, really must. Whatever. Never miss an appointment. And you know, you I'm sure most people will get there if they're determined. Mm -hmm. You try and do as you're told. Yeah, always do as you're told because <laughs> <laughs> is that at home or in leg clinic? <laughs> oh, it's certainly not at home. <laughs> oh, it's been really nice to speak to you. Um, and um good luck. I know it will heal very soon, but thank you for sharing your your journey as a patient, but also for you, Jan, as as you know, being with Ron's, you know, being Ron's wife and supporting him. It's it's really nice to hear how you've supported each other and sort of really held the positive vibes and yeah. it's it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Hayley. Thank you, Hayley. Take care. 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 And you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Bye.